So hi guys, my name is Zai, and today I'm gonna share um, some of my memories uh, in Cuba from my uh, study abroad at Lehigh um, experience. So um, the food in Cuba impressed me on the very first day. Before um, departure, I expected Cuban food to be exactly the same as Mexican or Spanish food. But turns out they have their own unique food culture. As a person who's obsessed with food and drinks, I had a variety of foods, rice, beans, cocktails, meats, and vegetables. What surprised me the most was how their food are grown and prepared. So during the visits at the two farms, I learned that most of the farmers don't put any chemicals in the process of growing corpse and plants, which leads to uh, a healthier meal and a better taste of dishes. However, the quality of food varies greatly between the restaurants primarily serving for tourists and the Cuban people. The price of food can be considered unreasonably high when the income of people in Cuba is taken into account. One meal can sometimes be half of the monthly salary of a state worker in Cuba. Almost all the existing restaurants are on the behalf of tourists. A couple of the private sector restaurants uh, we went to are uh, extremely skillful at delighting customers and providing unforgettable experiences from which I could tell that the restaurants must be a frequently visited place for tourists and have strong connection with the tourist companies. As time passes, they gradually became better and uh, more uh, innovative for a sole purpose of um, attracting more tourists in a Cuban size. Uh, going to such restaurants is seen as a uh, luxury. For them, any of the restaurants is only for special occasions, uh, once or twice a year. According to our guide, uh, a native Cuban, his, his name is uh, Alvin, and his cost for food in a month is around 40 CUCs, which is equivalent to $40. If he cooks all the meals and not going out, that's under that kind of uh, situation. And most of his meals are either ramen or something very simple. Uh, it struck me that how a Cuban can li live a life in that in this way, um, and going to um, the country, uh, and enjoy every privileges of being a tourist don't make you truly understand the country. I think uh, sometimes it even like puzzles you more. Uh, at the end of the trip, so uh, I asked our uh, guy Alvin. And what can we do to help Cuban as a, Cuba as a nation uh, and the people here? And the answer I got was um, try to spend the same amount of money we spend and try to experience how we live our lives. The answer uh, made me realize the biggest insight of Cuba. Only Cubans know the truth. From another point of view, um, the regions in Cuba are very uh, isolated only connected by tourism, but um, not actually connected between Cubans. This, this situation fosters a like spectrum of different opinions of how each Cuban sees and thinks about their own country. And that there's not a black and white answer. Cuba is a country that has a lot of gray areas, which are all about how each individual view the country from their own perspective, from what they are limited to see. This happens not only in Cuba, but many other countries as well. So let's talk about vehicles in Cuba. Um, so the cars in Cuba are the most favored things by um, tourists. On the roads, almost half of the cars are the ones from uh, 1950s. In all of the three old cars I went on, none of the meters works in the car. And the cars make like really loud and buzzing sound when um, they're driving on the roads. Uh, during the rides, I felt like I hopped on a time machine, uh, going back to the 19th century. Uh, in this frozen time country, almost uh, all of my stresses and pressures from school, from, uh, all the classes were taken over by this refreshing 19th um, century vibe. As I spent time in Havana, Trinidad, and Cienfuegos, uh, I actually felt like uh, my life clock began to slow down and I started wondering about my life, uh, my real life, about who I truly want to become. Uh, I had never been that present before I arrived in Cuba. 
a mysterious Caribbean country that will forever have my heart. Um, I was first confused by all the old cars because I didn't know how they are maintained and fixed by people since they're no longer manufactured and uh, far outdated. Um, and in, but uh, in reality, there are groups of uh, mechanics, engineers who know the structure of the old cars and when um, some part of the car goes wrong, they would uh, throw away the broken part and put a new one. Uh, the reason why many Cubans still keep the cars is that the cars all they have and uh, surprisingly almost all the tourist buses in Cuba are imported from China. And uh, animals in Cuba. Uh, so in Cuba no matter where you go you can always see um, homeless dogs or cats uh, roaming on the streets uh, picking up leftover food from people on the ground. Uh, their bony looking makes me feel really sympathetic and uh, I would pause for a moment to just pet them and show them they're uh, at least cared by some of us. Uh, this situation happen happens in a lot of poor countries where when people are having trouble to even uh, feed themselves. Uh, in my opinion, uh, this could reveal that in Cuba, although people appear to be happy and optimistic on the outside uh, to tourists, they're actually very much in need and have trouble supporting their families. As I mentioned in the second topic, the public transportation system in Cuba is very broken and provides very limited access for people to go out of their places un unless you pay a huge amount of money relative to the monthly income of um, a native Cubans. Uh, from my observation during the bus rides, uh, on the countryside, a large percentage of Cubans still rely on uh, farming and using animals as their transportation, uh, like horses. Uh, some even take advantage of uh, the thriving tourism to make money by allowing tourists interact with their animals. Um, my wish is that one day they will find a place that um, uh, they belong to and be taken care of. So uh, another good memory is in Old Havana. Uh, so Old Havana is the heart of Havana, also of Cuba. Old Havana perfectly reflects a small picture of the whole Cuba society in the present and in the past. It is a place where you don't need plans because you will find things that uh, fascinate you and people just by randomly bumping around. This place is primarily dominated by um, the tourists from uh, all over the world. Uh, including a number of international students studying the University of Havana as we encountered uh, five Chinese graduate students uh, in the Confucius uh, institution. And um, in this place, um, I deduced that um, Old Havana has the biggest underground network since uh, this is where all the tourists concentrate and the dense concentra uh, distribution of small buildings give them sufficient space to hide and do their underground works. They all believe that the gov government will uh, one day fall and the day is approaching. The underground market is growing exponentially in Cuba and the people are not satisfied with the bare amount of uh, government pays them monthly no matter how hard they tried and how many things they have access uh, to or buy by spending a reasonable amount of money relative to their salary um, and this is very shocking to me um, and when we were in Chinatown I was shocked by how many Chinese I could see all the Chinese shops and uh, restaurants were run by Cubans and only three customers were Chinese in all the restaurants in Chinatown um, almost all the Chinese immigrants who used to live in Havana left Cuba and went back to China um, this is what I think um, and I also think that the reason behind this is that just similar to other uh, Cubans, they're restricted by the government and not able to make good living. This could be another point improving the exploitation of the Cuban government and the regime. If one takes a look of the, um, the pictures I, I'm showing right now, uh, one would see that um, some buildings were actually uh, abandoned and broke down but uh, still standing between the nicely designed Spanish architectures uh, in the center of the city. The juxtaposition between the broken buildings and their surroundings makes me wonder that how come it is possible that no official workers is taking care of the appearance of their city. I think 
it is caused by the insufficient amount of workers willing to do the job, which implies that there's a possibility that they're not paid well by doing the job. And uh, but overall, Old Havana is where you can find the truth about Cuba and the people. It's where you can see the ongoing revolution of the country if you pay attention and observe carefully. Uh, so nightlife in Cuba, uh, going to bars at night was our every night's routine. Seeing 60 years old women dancing with their husbands or boyfriends was very normal. And I was surprised by the fact that most of the people in the bar dancing were uh, middle age instead of uh, young age adults. Uh, the guards were actually very nice and friendly and uh, they took us into a bar without warning us that it is uh, mandatory to buy a drink to be there. But uh, when um, their bo boss was there, we had to buy like a $10 gift card uh, of the bar to enter. And all the bars we have been to were very well organized and managed. For example, no one was smoking or making loud noises in any of the bars. Under the charm of this uh, festive vibe, a glass of mojito or Cuba Libre together with the deep resonant music first intoxicates you and furthermore sinks you into a beautiful Cuba dream. Um, for this topic, I'm going to be speaking very fast. Uh, so uh, it's about uh, Cuban arts and artists. On the first day, after putting our bags down, we went for uh, a private restaurant for dinner. And this restaurant is called um, Café Don. Uh, entering into the restaurant and sitting down at a table with my group, I looked around and paid special attention to the design of the restaurant. I realized that um, the Cubans are uh, have a very unique way uh, of interpreting art. Uh, by looking at the three pictures hung on the wall, they're in sequence of closer and closer zoomed in the captures of uh, green traffic light for a crosswalk. Uh, such a common object that we never had attention on. But for Cubans, they looked at it from a very different perspective, captured it in an artistic way, and framed it uh, in a pr uh, presentation of art. Uh, artworks uh, can be seen everywhere in Cuba. The presence of art has blended into their everyday life and culture, has become their lifestyle. Uh, if one pays attention, they, uh, he would notice that many Cuban restaurants uh, would have Christmas trees or arts from different countries as decorations inside. Instead of coordinating and integrating every design to fit it, uh, to fit the standard pattern, um, Cuban art is infused with a mix of beauty, putting different colors together with eccentric lines and shapes. Uh, in the in the pictures, um, the statue holding uh, on uh, mile markers. It's actually a real person. 
um, that is a way how he makes money by taking pictures with tourists. But even if you don't have money, he would still like to have your pictures taken with him. Uh, in my eye, the morality and politeness of this kind of artists are admirable. Um, standing uh, in the same pose and not moving, the painted artist is required to have a strong stamina to endure uh, through the hot weather just to be part of the scene of tourists and make some living. Uh, and the last artist I met was a painter who draws um, pottery for a farm. I was curious about who was the designer and uh, painter behind the arts in the farm. So I was fortunate enough to bump into the person in a small building. He told me that he painted and designed uh, most of the artworks in the farm. He studied art and designed the art in an art institution close to the farm. Uh, and uh, I asked uh, what are the ideas behind all the paintings. He pointed at the painted potteries and told me uh, all the faces he drew were women faces and he wants to express his aspiration to fight for women in Cuba through his artworks. I was shocked by his words and the unshakable determination in his eyes. Uh, then I asked him uh, about the ideas behind some of the paintings on the wall and the prices he would sell them for. Uh, there were paintings about his passion towards music, uh, chicken fight, uh, women, and uh, poverty. Uh, by women, I mean like fighting for women. And uh, each of them costs around um, 50 to 70 CUCs. Uh, the one I bought off from him and I liked the most was a pottery, uh, was a portrait of an old man who has different sea creatures as his hair and two hummingbirds on top. He spent two, two months. Uh, drawing the painting with the desire to show a Cuban love towards all. And uh, wherever and whenever you drive around Havana, you can always see numerous of tour buses, like part uh, packed of tourists parking uh, beside the streets. Tourism must account for more than 4.3% 4 .3 of the GDP growth in Cuba. Uh, data collection uh, might not be accurate, but since uh, Cuba's infrastructure and uh, data system are not the first rate, uh, I also saw how Cuban uh, nationalism is manifested uh, through the colors of uh, Cubans used on architectures and almost everything. We also visited the Museum of Cuban Fine Arts, which is not easy for people to visit. In the museum, one painting of the Cuba artist illustrates that uh, Cubans view um, like death as a happy thing in, in one's life because they believe that that's the moment we leave our physical body and become a purely soul. Um, they think the inner part of ourselves are more important than what is on the outside. One painting with a variety of colors mixed mm -hmm. illustrates that Cuban society is differentiated and defined by having a large mixture of different cultures and races. In other uh, artists hand, a uh, women uh, role and uh, status in Cuba are demonstrated and the painting shows that it is a pride as being a woman in this society since women play a um, crucial role of uh, complementing men. Uh, in summary of the art uh, museum experience, I think the real model of Cuban society is embodied in all the arts created by different people throughout the history. Uh, democracy can be seen uh, in the freedom of how artists express their thoughts by drawing them uh, out in physical forms. Music in Cuba. Um, the warmest welcome you get from Cuba is their beautiful music. Wherever you go, the vibrant music is always played by a customized uh, band at some bar or uh, corners. Um, this brings a lively vibe to the city. Yes, pe the people here are behind the main trend of global development under the influence of the U.S. embargo and conservative government. The time here is still frozen and way behind. The people here don't have as many advanced technologies and useful tools as we do. They're restricted to travel outside of Cuba by their monthly salaries and the, the rules set by the government. They have very little access to the internet and they are um, most of the time disconnected to the real world. But the optimism they behold and the efforts they put in to 
make everyone else around them a little bit happier, should be respected and learned by us, who sometimes only know to complain how bad our living is while we are already way more privileged than they are. And uh, here I'm going to show you some natural sceneries in Cuba. Uh, the environment in Cuba is very unpolluted and well preserved. Um, the population is very uh, scarcely distributed. Looking at the sceneries is relaxing and relieve me from all my stresses and worries. Um, and in here, uh, Cuba, since the people do not have many um, technologies, they pursue a simple lifestyle, intimate to the natural world. Uh, so uh, I'm going to be talking about women in Cuba with only one picture. Uh, so after the dark period of slavery, women in Cuban society became highly well respected and recognized by people. Many Cubans still think the importance and status of women are not yet appreciated. They advocate for women by including figures or portraits of women in forms of art or build statues to commemorate the contribution of women to Cuban society from the history. There are many more ways that I've not seen, but uh, essentially, the merits and the strength of the women in Cuba are greatly honored and admitted by almost every Cuban. During our lecture with the journalist working in the baseball field, I asked that how women's sports in Cuba are developed, especially for baseball, since it is a national sport. The answer I got was that women athletes in Cuba have a lot of potentials, but due to the scarcity of the uh, resources in Cuba, women's sports would not be provisioned the same as the men's sports in terms of funding, equipment, and space. It is be not because women are seen as weaker than men, but because men's sports came out the first and thrived as part of part of the history order 
Uh, he believed that Cuba will need a great new level of economy to have space to further develop all women's sports. Uh, so in the video I'm gonna play, um, you will see a bunch of middle school kids who dressed up nicely in their school uniform, playing soccer on the basketball court in their school. Uh, and what uh, what ironic in this video was that the playground looks like it has never been taken care of and does not have any facilities. The basketball hooks were torn down and the goals uh, for soccer were made uh, made out of tree branches and fishing net. But the uniforms that all the kids wear look brand new and high quality. One thing to mention is that every school in Cuba has the same uniform which acts as an equalizer for all the schools and students. Um, and my theory behind this is that all the school-related components were largely uh, subsidized by the government, such as textbook, uniform, and uh, faculty members uh, who are assigned by the government after they graduate from college to fulfill their public service for two or three years, and so on. Uh, but for uh, facilities in the school, they're not the essentials uh, seen by the government. So this means that each school would be more responsible to finance their facilities by themselves. As a result, uh, due to the very limited budget each school has for themselves, they wouldn't be able to maintain the campus and all the facilities. Uh, so on that very second day, we met three national baseball champion players and asked them questions. I was first impressed by their um, sports spirits they carry with. They would wish their teammates who decide to play for other countries the best, believing that they're sending their uh, ways of playing baseball to other countries. They also believe that the highest pride of playing baseball is to represent their country, Cuba, on the global stage. Uh, they talked about how players in the, US, in the U.S. are mainly playing the sports for the high-paid salary instead of uh, playing for uh, their love towards the sports uh, like Cuban, Cubans do. According to them, uh, baseball in Cuba was first introduced under the presence of the U.S. In the conversation, the indispens indispensable tie of Cuban healthcare and sports was as well mentioned. Uh, players wouldn't concern about their expenses or uh, on injuries uh, since all of that will be guaranteed and covered by the first rate uh, the free first rate healthcare. As they were praising the quality of the healthcare, some of them were was like showing us the injuries they've had in the past and was telling us how well the injuries uh, uh, have been recovered. And baseball is their national sport and and the most popular sport in Cuba. Um, but also soccer, which is considered as a more elite sport in Cuba, comes as the second, and it is becoming more and more popular across the country. The three baseball players think uh, that uh, baseball is a people sport where you don't need to have any physical advantage to be a good player. In his answer for my question about how Cuban parents see their children playing baseball as their career, uh, the stereotypical attitude of Cuban parents have towards their kids if they decided to play baseball professional, uh, prof professionally is very supportive and approving. They would be very proud of their, their kids rather than persuading them to study to be an engineer or a doctor. So here's the end of the video and I hope you've enjoyed it and learned something from um, 
all of my experiences and um, thank you very much for watching.